What's up, sweaties? You're watching Collider Heroes. It's episode 173, a tasty Wednesday. I'm John Schnepp. Thanks for being on board. We're going to get really sweaty today and talk about a lot of comic book news. With me is Robert Meyer Burnett. Well, John, have you seen the YouTube videos of the Hot Toys Hulkbuster, which is actually out? You know what? I did, actually. I saw it late last night. I think it was you posting something about it, or somebody was like, Robert, you've got to see the Hulkbuster yes. or something. I was like, what is this? Because Robert's been talking about this massive, Two and a half years. Hulkbuster, yeah, literally, I was going to say two years, but two and a half years. I was like, when I first heard that he spent how much money on this? Well, thing? I haven't spent it yet. I did put right. $100 down in April of 2015. Right, but how much is this thing? Like $800? It's like $900. All yeah. right, so it's, it's a quite an expensive toy. <laughs> it would fall more into the piece of art, as I wouldn't really refer to it as a toy. Um, it comes with like 7,000 different pieces. Because I, I was like, what is this Hulkbuster about? And I turned, I clicked on some guy's video. Now, if you want to talk about getting sweaty... There's a dude. Budget Stark is his name. Whatever, whoever that dude is, everything's <laughs> broken out into weird, like, this is the chest piece. And I was like, I turned it off. I was like, this is too much for me. Look up Budget Stark on YouTube. No, yeah, yeah, if you want to get, yeah, he breaks it all down. If you're into that kind of thing, then watch that because it's all broken down. Like, here's the different elements. So here's the different chest pieces. Here's the baby Iron Man that goes inside of the Hulk buzzer, all that stuff. I mean, literally, I'm sure you watched it eight times. Dude, it was pornographic. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> it was pornographic. Without, without getting too ill about it, I'm sure Robert was having some seizures. And that was only part one. He released part two this morning. Well, um, like I said, if you want to check that out, uh, Hot Quartz or whatever the guy's name is. Budget Stark. Budget Stark. Dude, you're doing a good job for the sweaties for Hot Toys, so keep it up. Let's get into the news. You know who's all, who's joining me as well? It's not Amy. It's Ashley Robinson. What's up, Ashley? Thanks I'm, for being back on the show. Thank you. I'm so excited that today the new Wonder Woman arc starts, and I got to read it early, so I'd recommend everyone picking it up here on this uh, Wednesday. Awesome By the way, didn't you just post the cover of your new comic book? Yes. Um, that first cover is awesome. My comic comes out in December. So it's yes. awesome. Pick it up. Thank Definitely. you. Jupiter Jet. You'll be able to buy it. Go directly to her site or Jason Emin. And check it out. What, what's yeah. the uh, comic publisher that's putting it out? Action Lab Entertainment. Action Lab. Mm -hmm. Get on that. Get some Jupiter Jet action. You know what's good? What's, let's get right into the Flash action. Flash. Flashpoint script has been handed in. Now we're going to be talking about who do we think they're going to get to direct it. Um, so Joby Harold did a rewrite. Uh, we don't know what the story is actually going to follow. We know that they changed the title to Flash Flashpoint when that was announced at San Diego Comic-Con, which was cut quite a stunner. Mm -hmm. That none of us really expected. Those of us who were there at the, you know, at the DC panel were sort of like they had a whole bunch of names and things going by, and you were like Flash Flashpoint. You're like, what? So <laughs> the, you know, the brakes were put on. A lot of names have been going around now. The Flash has had a, a very, a very hard time out of all of the DC films that have been announced. The Flash is the one that's had the most uh, problems as far as like landing a, a, a script landing a director who doesn't quit or get fired. So they've had a lot of turnover with The Flash while The Flash CW TV series just but just speeds ahead. Literally, it's on its, what is it, fifth season? It's fourth, fourth season. season fourth season. Uh, so, I mean, and it's a great show. So, Robert, let's start with you. What are your thoughts and expectations for Flash Flashpoint? And who do you think should direct it? Well, first of all, why don't they just call it Flashpoint? Like, Flash Flashpoint is kind of weird. Right. But, which they probably will end up just calling it Flashpoint. I, you know, I... I don't know. They've talked about Robert Zemeckis mm -hmm. being attached to this yeah. movie. I mean, I would love to see Joe Johnston come back and direct something like right. this. I mean, he did The Rocketeer. He also did Captain America, The First Avenger. Right. Um, I don't know who they're going to get to do the film, but if they've got a, a solid script, but they've had a solid script before right. for this movie. I mean, I, I obviously it's going to tie into the DCEU somehow. Right. I don't know. I mean, I'm excited to see this. I really like the portrayal of the Flash. I think that we're getting. I like everything we've seen so far. It's, but it's really hard to tell because I mean, I keep hearing news like uh, the gal who was cast has just been cut out, Casey Simmons. Right. Oh, really? Um, I had Iris that. West. All of the sequences or scenes that involve the Flash and his backstory have mm -hmm. now been tabled or shelved. The, we don't know this, but this is what we keep hearing. Mm -hmm. So scenes from the Just League movie, which introduces this new movie version Flash, we want to know more about his history and his past, and we want to have scenes. I don't know if that fits into the storyline of the Just League. What are your thoughts, Ashley? I really, I've had a theory about the Flash for a long time, um, and I really believe that Jeff Johns, uh, king of DC Comics, television, and movies, wants to direct this movie and that he's going to do everything in his power until he's the person in charge of it because he loves 
The Flash, he wrote. Flashpoint, he wrote a lot of really iconic Flash storylines. Um, he's been very involved in the TV show, and now that he's sort of graduated to movies, I think he's pushing really hard to make his directorial debut, right. and it's whether or not WB Proper is going to give it to him. Who I would like to see in charge of something like this is maybe um, a Chinese or a Japanese director, because I think the speed and the kinetic energy that you get from something like a Wushu-style movie could be translated really well into what we're going to want from The Flash because we have a sense of what speedsters are like from the show and this has to be something bigger and better than that. I like that. I haven't really thought about that. I mean, Gal Gadot is definitely on she's, you know, been she's going to be in Flashpoint. Great. So Put her in everything. That's been confirmed. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, when we first heard about Flashpoint being like when it was first announced, I literally was saying this is going to be Justice League 2. They're just not mm -hmm. calling it Justice League 2, but it's going to have everybody's going to be in it and this is going to be the way that they can do a, a like a a soft reboot, uh, if you will, like, hey, certain things change in the universe, other things didn't, only some characters are aware of the subtle changes that happened while time shifted. Mm -hmm. um, I think getting someone like Robert Zemeckis is the perfect person, not just because of him directing Back to the Future, but just he's a great director, he's a seasoned director, and I think he can handle these kinds of multiple characters and do a good job directing that kind of a bigger budget film. I'd like to see that. I mean, do you think that this will be the movie that reboots the universe for DCEU? What do you think? I don't think so. I think we just took the name Flashpoint because it's an iconic comic book name and it's an iconic television show name. It was a big part of Flash last season. Um, I think rebooting it in what is effectively the first phase would be premature despite the fact that DCEU does have sort of a mixed reaction, but there is that expectation that something in the status quo is going to change. I don't know if it's just going to be as big as a season-wide reboot, or maybe he'll uh, change into Wally West, and then I'd be really happy. <laughs> or, I mean, you know, Batman had a significant change in the Flashpoint right. universe. True. I mean, and, very true. And if that was the the you know it was uh, Bruce Wayne's father became Batman, right? You know, why don't they? Why don't they? If they needed to, if Batman was only the the character that needed to be affected, they could do that. You know, and I have to say, I, I watched all of the special features on the Wonder Woman Blu-ray right. over the weekend. Patty Jenkins, listening to her speak, she's so clearly got a great handle on this material. I mean, everything she said, if you want a, a masterclass in superhero adaptation directing, listen to her features. And I yeah. was like, man, if, if, if the shift from Zack Snyder overseeing the DC Universe, I think Patty Jenkins, they need to like move her into at least some kind of an advisory role mm -hmm. in the Flash movie. If Wonder Woman's going to be in it, why not? Because she's so thoughtful and she she clearly spent a lot of time and she's exactly the kind of person who should be directing and overseeing this kind of stuff. And I'd love to see her working with another director as she does moves into Wonder Woman 2 to have some synergy there, which they seem to have in the MCU to see more of that in the DCU from creatives who right. really understand the material could be really interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that Patty Jenkins is taking over in a story and producerial as well as directing Wonder Woman mm -hmm. 2, because I myself saw Wonder Woman again yesterday. Uh, we here at Collider did a commentary track for Wonder Woman, which was great seeing it on a big screen and kind of talking with friends about it. Mm -hmm. I just, once again, seeing that film, it's, it's such an amazing film. It's such a well done, superhero origin movie. I mean, it felt so much better even watching it again, even talking, kind of commenting on certain sequences, certain scenes like No Man's Land, we were just silent. Yeah. All the way till through No Man's Land till she saves the town and takes out that sniper. We were just, because it's not only just a set piece, but it's the introduction to what Wonder Woman is all about and why she is who she is. Those scenes like caring, love, those emotions are why she does what she, I mean, that against war, against hatred. So, I mean, I think those kinds of scenes in Wonder Woman were great. They, it's such a fantastic film. I know you must have seen Wonder Woman. If you haven't, get that Blu-ray, it's great. And the gag reel is fantastic. <laughs> I'd like to see Patty Jenkins take a bigger role. I don't know, I, pers I personally feel like Justice League 2, if they get that mm -hmm. far, she would be great at. Well, what was really interesting is all of the extended scenes. They, they weren't deleted scenes, but extended scenes, and then the the scene that they, the end tag from right. the movie that they cut, when Etta Candy gathers the group together and they're saying, we have to go grab this artifact, and it's a mother box. Right. And I was, you know, you're looking at the scene going, wow, I mean, that's interesting that they had planned to have that move into, so there has, there is a plan in place with the Flash film, and they've thought about this. 
So I'd like to see more of that and get Patty Jenkins in to do more, whatever she can do. Give her whatever she wants. Give her Man of Steel, because we know she's a big Superman fan. Give her literally whatever she wants. Definitely. <laughs> I, we're all in agreement Patty Jenkins rocks. We're looking forward to seeing what happens with The Flash and who they're going to announce who's going to helm Flashpoint. So let's get into our top five pull list where we're going to talk about trades and paperbacks coming out this week. Coming in at number five is The Colder Omnibus, written by Paul Tobin and illustrated by Juan Ferreira. And we should have that graphic coming up in one moment. There it is. I Colder. I that cover. That could, <laughs> it's Ashley V. Robinson's favorite cover. Um, that was recommended to me by uh, so uh, Holly from uh, Meltdown Comics, and I was really happy to read it, and I loved it. So I highly recommend Colder. It's very freaky and weird. Uh, number four coming in is Richard Stark's Parker, the score. That's right. The trade paperback is finally out. It's, it's written and drawn by Darwin Cook. It's adaptation. It is an incredible amazing series of Richard Stark's Parker character. He's done several editions. This one, the score is finally available in trade paperback. Pick it up if you love film noirs, if you love criminal, if you like that kind of stuff. I love that kind of stuff. Number three is Royal City, the next of kin trade paperback, which collects the individual issues from Jeff Lemire. It's a, it's definitely a, a really fun, uh, kind of grim, uh, I don't know if it's an auto bio or not. I think he's pulling from some of his uh, childhood, but it's a it's a really cool series written by the guy who does Moon Knight al along with a lot of other amazing comic books. Number two, we've got Thor Omnibus number three coming out just in time for Thor Ragnarok. It's uh, reprinting some of those Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and then Jack Kirby transitioning to John Buscema, some of those amazing issues with Thor. And finally, number one, we've got Absolute Justice League. That's Jeff Johns and Jim Lee rebirthing, re redoing the Justice League, which is kind of the group that you see in the movie now. This is their, this was their redo, redo of that. So that I, the Absolute series are fantastic. I have, you know, almost all of the DC and Marvel omnibuses, Absolutes, whatever the bigger size format in hardcover is great because it's a great way to read those comics all, all together in a hardcover book. I love it. Do you guys have any picks or do you want to talk about any of those pull lists, Ashley? I definitely also want to chime in about the oversize, the collections, because you can do arm curls at the same time and mm. you can get fit because they weigh the same amount as a small child. Sure. Um, I definitely want to echo checking out the original Thor stuff because I think it's wildly underrated. Yes. And now that Thor is trendy and cool because he's a hot guy in a movie, it's really exciting to see that it's coming back and being collected in this format for the first time. Um, and the Parker books are, again, really, really underrated. I think this is the last one or the second to last one uh, since the passing of right. Darwin Cook, who's hopefully looking down over all of us right now. And if you like James Bond, Jason Bourne, anything like that, it's a really, really great series to pick up. Definitely. Yeah, I was going to, I'll echo that sentiment. I mean, I love Darwin Cook's Parker mm -hmm. series. I've read some of the, the, Richard Stark is a great novelist. And uh, he, who's a big influence on people like Stephen King. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I love Darwin Cook's, Cook's work. And it's sad that we're clearly coming to the end of this because yep. he's no longer with us. But, uh, and I also, the absolute Justice League, I mean, come on. I, I, those absolute, I, I can't get enough of the absolute. I don't, I, I don't understand how they decide to make something absolute. But, you know. I think it's I'll, sales figures. I'll, I'll pick it. I'll pick them up. I'll, I'll pick them up. I I'll think get... it's like I mean, they when when a series goes to twelve issues and they have the same writer and artist and they were able to actually make mm -hmm. the the story arc go from one to six to seven to twelve right. and it works. I think that's when it gets to the trade papering and they're like, and the artwork is by Jim Lee. Those are the decisions. Oh, yeah. Those are those decisions where you're like, I'd like to see Jim Lee's art just a little bit bigger and in a hardcover. It makes sense. And Jeff Johns, it makes sense. Um, I have to say, last week. Dark Knight 3 Master Race came out, yes. the collected version, and I had not finished it. Right. And I bought it and read it, and you had said that you got choked up at the end. Yes. I totally, I was like, Schnepka, I'm not going to get choked up. Yeah. But there's a moment that happens, and, and somebody says something, and it was very fulfilling, and it was very sort of heartwarming, and I was like, and I got a little, little choked up. Yeah, it really worked. I mean, that's what I mean. A lot of us were really apprehensive about Dark Knight 3 because we, we lived through Dark Knight 2. It's Less a said, the better. surprisingly good series. Yeah, yes. yeah. Dark Knight 3, The Master Race, it's completely worth picking up the hardcover. It's fantastically illustrated by Andy Kubert, who basically takes the best of Frank Miller and like channels it into the artwork. Yeah, and yeah. of course, Frank Miller and Brian Azzarello are working on it together. So Azzarello is just able to, I don't know how their working relationship really kind of fed into each other, but they were back and forth in quite a bit. And it's, it's really, it's a great series. And 
And, you know, for those of you who enjoy The Dark Knight Returns, it's a great way, a capper for that series. And boy, bring on Dark Knight 4. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll, I'm, I'm just sort of more like, easy, easy. I want to see the Western Sin City before I see Dark Knight 4. I want Ooh. Frank Miller to, to, he's got a lot of things in the, you know, bubbling around. I'm like, I, when he mentioned that, I was like, dude, can you please do that Western Sin City? I want, I just love to see that. <laughs> Let's get into minor mutations where we're just going to talk about a bunch of different little news items that have sprinkled around over the last week. And we're going to talk about it. So number one on our list, Crisis on Earth X. That's right, it's the four show CW crossover that we've all wanted. It's not Infinite Earths, we know that. Eventually we'll get to that. Hopefully we'll get something in that line, maybe an animated version of that. But this is sounds great. And I love all the things that everybody at the CW channels are doing. That for all us sweaties, they are making dreams come true for us on the small screen on a weekly basis. Number two, I wasn't aware of this, but Robert Meyer Burnett alerted me to this and I almost freaked out at an aneurysm. That's right, uh, me and him love this comic that no one knows about, American Flag. <laughs> That's right, Howard Chaikin's American Flag picked up as a TV series by Luc Besson's Eurocorp company. That may, you know, doesn't mean Besson's gonna be involved, but it means it's probably gonna get made and get on American Flag. It exists in trade paperbacks. If you don't know about it, get on it. It's the highest thing I could recommend. In a, little, in a few weeks, we're gonna be doing some graphic novel recommendation lists. It's gonna be on there, so you get on it and read that comic book, it's fantastic. Number three, we've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season five poster shows outer space in their near future. That's right, looks like Coulson's going to the moon. On uh, number three, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm sorry, number four, we've got Amy Jackson is Saturn Girl in Supergirl season three. Uh, I don't know if that's good. that means that the rest of the Legion of Superheroes is gonna be in there, but I certainly hope so. Mm. Uh, number five, Watchmen's being scripted over at HBO by Damon Lindelof. I just wanted to remind everybody, because I'm really excited about that, maybe we're gonna get some before Watchmen, maybe we're gonna get an entire episode of Minutemen. That's right, Lindelof, listen to us. Number six, <laughs> new Ant-Man and the Wasp set picks reveal their new costumes and outfits. They look fantastic. Number seven, we've got the Teen Titans Go gets an animated feature film coming out in 2018. And finally, Andy and Lauren test their powers in the Gifted clip, which is coming out the new X-Men series on Fox. Let's start with you, Ashley. What from that list oh, do you man. want to talk about? Oh, man, there's so much news, finally, which is so great. Um, I definitely want to talk about Crisis on Earth X and how amazing Phil Jimenez's art is on there. Mm. Uh, if you like that, go read his Wonder Woman and Superwoman runs. Yes. They're amazing. I'm dying to see the live-action Ray because they cast Russell Tavi, and I love him so much, and I think he's such a fabulous and an interesting actor. And I'm really excited that this crossover is not going to be another invasion. I thought last year it was awesome, but it's nice to see that we're moving away from that and we're going to do bigger, better, more comic booky things than ever. I've also seen the premiere episode of this season of The Flash and it's great. So Excellent. I hope that everyone's excited about that. Also, uh, yay Saturn Girl. I don't know who that actor is. I'm really sorry, but I, she's my favorite Legionnaire. And I'm hoping that um, with her and with Monel and with the Legion ring that we've seen in the different flashes over right. the last couple seasons that, excuse me, we're finally going to get the Legion that we all really want. <laughs> I would love to see that because I mean, you know, Legion is really, it has the possibility for, uh, to be a TV series. It would be so good. Like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I mean, but have it as a weekly show. If they did that, if they did it properly and hopefully Greg Berlanti and a lot of the people over the CW are setting it up and it feels like they are setting it up mm -hmm. so that we can actually get a Legion TV series. Robert, what pops off to you? Well, I mean, first and foremost, I I've never been so stunned by any entertainment news since probably I was 10 years old and I got to see Star Trek The Motion Picture that they were even making Star Trek The Motion Picture. But but I, I've talked on the show for two and a half years about American Flag. I'd love to see American Flag adapted. Basically, it's a comic that ran 50 issues, but really only the Chaikin issues are significant. Alan Moore did a few. But the fact that a, a comic from 1983 that is so relatively obscure, even though it was incredibly, it, it, American Flag was incredibly uh, influential all through the 80s. Even Robocop gave right. Howard Chaykin a special thanks in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, we live in basically the time of American Flag. The fact that it's been announced and Eurocorp's going to make it probably means it's going to get made and well funded. Amazing. Of course, the Earth X news, as I always talk about, I love those, the JLA team ups with the JSA. I mean, I looked at that image and I'm like, we now live in times where, unlike other certain televised TV franchises from venerable ages long ago, there are people that really <laughs> understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and they look back at, at the, the material and where it came from. But seeing that Earth X cover 
you know, the yeah. cover. Yes. I mean, that was exactly what a Justice League JSA team up with each character on the sidebar. I, I just am thinking, wow, it's so nice to love something that you've loved your whole life and know that there are creators currently working on these things that really like and understand and honor what's come before, as opposed to not. I agree. <laughs> and speaking in those terms, I want Damon Lindelof to do an incredible job with Watchmen because we don't even know if it could be an extended, like this is just season one mm -hmm. or season two. I, I hope it's a reimagining because we've already got a pretty straight from the comic, maybe a lot of some changes here and there with uh, Zack Snyder's feature film, especially the ultimate cut or whatever that final edition is called, which is almost four hours long. I feel like I'd like to see someone take the Watchmen idea, transform it to maybe a now period of time. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of a doomsday clock things happening in our real world right now. So I think that, you know, a mirror to our real world is what Alan Moore was writing back in the 80s. It wasn't too far away from when he was writing it. So I'd like to see that with what Damon Lindelof can do. I think he's a very talented guy. So I hope uh, it's just the Black Freighter miniseries. <laughs> hey, look, I, I'm, I'm all for any of those things. I'd li I like some of the elements from mm -hmm. before Watchmen. Some of the elements from before Watchmen didn't work, and some of them worked great, especially Darwin Cook's Minutemen. So yeah. like I said, there's a lot of possibilities. It's a beautiful universe to explore, and we're done exploring for this episode. For for us, let, let's, where, where can people find you, Robert? Oh, you can always find me on Twitter at Burnett RM. Find me on on Instagram at RM Burnett or find me on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. And by the way, the Russian hotbots have been out in force. Like I can I'm imagine. getting them every other day. <laughs> There's going to be like Hulkbuster Russian hotbots attacking you now, dude. I wish. Ooh, gonna be bring like, them on. Uh, what is a little, uh, what did he call her? Bet Betty or Betsy? Whatever that little flying. Oh, what is that? What is, what is the flying thing? In, yeah, remember? In, it's the Hulkbuster. Veronica? Outfit. Is it Veronica? Somebody write it in on the comments section. We can't remember. <laughs> Ashley, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. Uh, the first Wednesday of November, the If Anthology comes out from Alterna Comics. Jason Simon and I have a story in that. And then our series, Jupiter Jet, drops December 6th. Please go pre-order it. Pre-order it now. Jupiter Jet coming at you. I'm John Schnepp. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Thanks for watching Heroes on Wednesday, episode 173. I'll see you tomorrow. What's up, sweaties? John Schnepp here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Heroes. You want to watch more Collider episodes of Heroes, comic book shopping, and click on any of these links right here to get more of that content. You can subscribe right now and share Collider Heroes, share comic book shopping with your friends. Thanks for watching.